Well, hello everyone. We'll go ahead and get uh, tonight's listening circle uh, going. Welcome to another District 6 listening circle. Um, for those of you who um, this is your first listening circle that you've been to and those watching online, um, the purpose and goal of our listening circles um, is to uh, discuss issues that our neighborhoods are uh, experiencing um, in a format where we connect the city departments that can do something about um, the things that you're experiencing in your neighborhood. Um, and ultimately for my office as the District 6 representative and also um, for the staff who are here um, to be able to hear directly from you about the challenges you're experiencing. And each listening circle um, is topic specific um, so that we're talking very specific to the concerns that our office has, and has been hearing a lot about uh, from you all as our residents and neighbors um, and also issues that our staff is hearing about. Uh, tonight's listening circle is specifically all things related to wildlife um, and what the city um, is doing and what you can do to partner with the city in managing our wildlife. Um, specifically, tonight we'll be talking a lot about egrets and coyotes. Um, some of y'all may know my background. Um, I wrote a whole dissertation on grass and grasslands. And so um, I think it's really important um, as a growing city um, that we continue to uh, conserve um, our natural heritage. That is the Fort Worth Prairie. Um, that is rich um, with all kinds of wildlife, all kinds of uh, plant species, and just beautiful scenery. Um, that's one of the reasons why, um, as um, a council office, we focus specifically on the open space program. Um, thank you all who participated in the 2022 bond program. Um, we um, um, put a proposition forward as a council for the voters to decide on um, as it relates to conserving open space across the city. Um, and the voters approved a $15 million proposition for the city to acquire open space conservation areas, um, not only as an amenity for the city of, of Fort Worth residents and guests to enjoy outdoor activities um, and additional park spaces and trails, um, but also as a strategy for conserving um, wildlife all across um, the city in more suitable habitats, right, than um, in the middle of our neighborhood. Sometimes that's not the best habitat for our, our wildlife. Um, and for the safety of um, our residents. Um, for those of you who haven't heard the news, it's a little bit dated, but um, as a part of the open space conservation, um, we have uh, secured one of the largest parks in the Fort Worth system here in District 6, um, being the Chisholm Trail Open Space Conservation Area, which is, uh, it started out as 270 acres, um, and last year, last summer, we were able to add 30 additional acres to that. So now um, it's right at, or a little under two, 200, um, or sorry, it's right under 300 acres um, of open space conservation and it will be an amazing amenity for us and our vi um, guests and visitors to the city. Um, so with that being said, um, I also want to thank a few people, um, our code compliance um, department and also Texas Parks and Wildlife is here. Um, and thank you all. Um, you know, we have um, had a lot of conversations as a district about wildlife, um, specifically with egrets um, and the challenges that we're experiencing in our neighborhoods, um, particularly one house y'all may all remember had over 290 um, egrets nesting, both chicklings and also adult birds. Um, and because of working together with you all um, and with staff, um, I was proud to see that we now have a migratory bird um, operation policy that um, works to um, deter egrets before they nest because they're federally protected. And once they're nested, we cannot disturb those nests. Um, to not only to deter them to more suitable habitat, um, but to ensure that we work with um, not only our local and state partners, but also our federal partners like uh, the Army Corps of Engineers to ensure that we have suitable habitat um, that's in open space areas for them to nest. And so thank you all for your input on that. I mean, thank you staff for the amazing work that y'all did with that. Um, without any further ado, um, I'd like to introduce um, two um, folks that will be presenting a little bit about um, what, what the work that's being done around managing our wildlife. Um, once they present, we will open up the floor for any questions that you have. You see that we have our whole uh, code compliance team that serves our district here. Um, and so um, if for some chance that we can't answer your questions, 
Um, we will certainly be taking note of that. My office staff is here. Um, Davia Johnson, raise your hand, is our district director, and Joshua Rivers is our constituent services director, who is your liaison um, for all things um, that are important to you uh, that you need to help navigating through the city with. And so you have um, a man and a friend in Josh, and so be sure to contact him um, and get his contact info at the end of uh, the event. Um, and so without any further ado, I'd like to bring up Chris Lorette first. We also have Rachel Richter, did I get that right? <laughs> um, with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Um, they'll give a briefing uh, to you all, um, and then we'll open up the floor once they're finished for questions. Also, if you're watching online, um, we know that you may not be able to interact live with us right now as this is a recording. Um, and so if whatever questions that you have, please feel free to send those to um, our District 6 Council Office at district6 at fortworthtexas.gov. Um, without any further ado, Chris, come on up, give the residents a briefing, um, and then next we'll have Rachel come up. Hi, my name's Chris Lee Red. I'm the co-compliance superintendent for animal control, and I'm just going to give you all an update as far as egrets for tank, uh, Candle Ridge area. And of course, we're already in to the migrating period for this year, for 2023. Uh, they started coming in already. I don't think we've had too much going on down here in the south area by Candle Ridge. Most of the sightings that we have as far as egrets coming in is further north, up by our Sunny Bank area and district, I want to, can't remember exactly what district, but it's to the east of 35 by Basswood. Uh, as far as the everybody down here in the Candle Ridge area, they've had a lot of people last year that grouped together. Everybody knew what to do as far as scaring the birds out. They cleaned their trees. They made their trees trimmed out. They had arbitrists come in and clean the, in, the insides of the trees, which helped a lot. And this year, I think uh, we're more worried about Ball Lake, which is going to be to the west. And that area, we've already uh, contacted the owners of the property over there, and we're working with them and some arbitrists, hopefully, that will be cleaning out their nests and so forth. Uh, as far as the north area, we've made contact with everybody over there. Uh, all the owners, some of them just went ahead and cleaned out their trees and chopped the trees down. And we are continuing our progress with all the neighborhoods. Uh, as far as continuing the progress, if y'all have any calls, if y'all see any egrets, y'all can use my Fort Worth app. Y'all can notify us about the egrets coming in. Uh, my team will get those calls and we'll go out and assist. Uh, or you can call 817-392-1234, which is our city call center. They will, they will also take the calls. And the stray team and our special projects team, as well as our senior officer for the South District, will continue to assist and help any citizen that needs help with the egrets. Uh, that's pretty much what I have right now for egrets. Uh, I know y'all had asked some calls about coyotes as well. Uh, as far as we know right now with the coyotes, uh, I know where they're denning. I'm not planning on removing any coyotes because of the simple fact they have not done anything that we are we don't want to remove some that are familiar for the area because if they start, you start removing them, you're going to have other coyotes come in and they're not familiar with the area, they start causing problems, okay? Uh, but that's pretty much where I stand with the coyotes, okay? Uh, Rachel, you want to say anything as far as coyotes? Cause Probably like number one inquiry that we get into our office is coyote, right? And that either ranges from, um, you know, 
I saw a coyote and like I want to be its friend to like I saw a coyote and we're all gonna die um, and so we try to find the middle ground with that you know and the thing about coyotes is I think here in North Texas it is would be much more unusual to have a neighborhood that does not have coyotes in the area than to have one that does. I think the majority of our neighborhoods do have coyotes in the area. Now, the important thing about your coyotes in the neighborhood is how much do you know that they're there? How much do you notice that they're there? Because what we're concerned about with coyotes is what is their behavior? Um, and so if the coyotes in your neighborhood, you don't really notice that they're there or you might only see them once or twice a year at night, that's more or less what coyotes should be doing. On the back side of this coyote handout, you'll notice there's like kind of a seven point scale. Um, and that scale was developed by people who researched coyotes in urban areas. Um, Coyotes in urban areas are so common that they've actually, there's actually been a lot of research done on them, and we know a lot about them, and we know that they have um, predictable patterns of behavior as they become increasingly habituated to people. We also know that they're very responsive to human actions, and basically we determine where they are on that scale. Um, and so, there's more to this that um, is not on this handout, which is basically like what are our reactions, like what's an appropriate response to all of these. And basically, you know, um, if there's, if you're at a point where you're starting to feel like, okay, I'm seeing coyotes a lot more than I used to, or they're hanging out in people's yards a whole lot, or um, they're following people who are walking their dogs, things like that. Those are some things that might be kind of a little bit of a concern that, um, not of danger, but that they're getting too comfortable. They're starting to lose their fear of people if those types of things start happening. But the good news is there's some really easy things that the community can do to make sure that the coyotes kind of get back to where they were behavior-wise. First and foremost, with coyotes, it's all about food. You want to make really sure that um, you're not feeding them intentionally. I always feel really silly saying that because that's like wildlife 101, right? Like don't feed the wildlife. But the stories that I have collected <laughs> over the years of people um, you know, going to different cities and stuff, there is one golf course where they were concerned about why um, coyotes were coming up to people while they were playing golf and so they started watching and there were golfers that were keeping dog treats in their golf bags and giving them to the coyotes right okay so that's why even though i know y'all know better i always just say it <laughs> because i've heard so many ridiculous stories that you wouldn't believe um, but i think what happens more often that attracts coyotes to neighborhoods is the unintentional feeding and so this is where you basically just want to take some common sense precautions to make sure that you're not um, accidentally feeding the coyotes. So that's make sure your trash is secure. Um, make sure if you're feeding your pets outside, that's fine. But take the bowls inside when they're done. Um, if you have uh, fruit trees, you want to pick up the fallen fruit from the trees. Um, you also want to... Um, maintain uh, like firewood piles and stuff like that. And if you have bird feeders in your backyard, sweep up the seed underneath it. So coyotes are opportunistic omnivores, so they'll eat a lot of plants. They also eat animals, right? Um, but the majority of their diet is rodents. So some of these things like trash and pet food, they can, the coyotes will eat that themselves. Some of these other things, um, things that coyotes like to eat, like rodents, which is the majority of their diet, um, the, you know, like fallen bird seed is gonna attract rodents and then that's gonna attract coyotes. Um, so those are the things that you really wanna be mindful of. Um, you also wanna, another thing that you can do if you're concerned about the behavior of the coyotes in the neighborhood is if you have a coyote that like 
you know, it sees you, you see it, and you don't feel like it's responding appropriately, like, and, you know, it's not running away from you, or if it's hanging out somewhere where a coyote just shouldn't be, like your yard, um, that's when you want to haze. And hazing is basically yelling, making loud noises, and throwing things. Um, and with hazing, um, basically anything that's scary or intimidating will work. You can bang pot lids together, you can just yell and wave your hands. Um, one thing that doesn't work so great in urban areas is car horns, because they hear those all the time, right? Um, but anything that's kind of like a loud, scary noise, um, if you're hazing a coyote, you want to make sure that you keep it up until the animal leaves the area. Um, if you go outside and you yell and make a loud noise, and you just kind of look at the coyote, and the coyote looks at you, and then you're like, oh, that didn't work, and you go inside, the coyote is kind of like, oh, that sure was a silly thing that that human did, right? But if you've annoyed it enough that you make it, made it leave the area, then you know that you've kind of reminded it that humans are dangerous. And that's where, like, if it doesn't respond right away to, like, um, the audio deterrence, um, that's where I would pick up a stick or a rock and throw it, like, with the intent to hit. And they'll, they'll be gone because you reminded them humans can hurt me. Um, and usually the good news is coyotes are pretty responsive to that and you'll see a behavior change in their behavior within a couple of weeks if not if not faster than that um, as Chris said relocation trying to get rid of them not a good idea um, there will always be more coyotes in the area that can move in so it's better to address the underlying issue that might be causing some of those undesirable behaviors also coyotes have what we call density dependent reproduction and they're also pack animals. And if you destabilize that pack and their numbers get low, then they have more babies. Um, so you have more adults reproducing, but they also can have more pups per litter. So you can actually end up with more coyotes that may not have as good as manners as the coyotes that you have now. Um, and also another negative side effect of removing the coyotes is you tend to see an increase in the things that they eat, so rodents. Um, if you do feel like you're at a point where you know you're kind of like looking at the seven point scale and you're really concerned about the coyotes one thing that neighborhoods can do is start a monitoring program so this is basically where you just have people report to a central location whenever they see a um, coyote behaving inappropriately um, and you're going to record information like where and when, what was the coyote doing, were there other animals around, did the coyote respond to the human, that type of stuff. And that helps to kind of get a picture of like exactly where y'all are at on the scale and also um, can help you um, potentially identify hot spots where um, you know the most activity is being seen. Um, and so that, that's pretty much my quick and dirty spiel on coyotes there. Um, and I guess, are we doing questions now or? So yeah. the other thing is, is if y'all have anything that y'all want to look at, we have information on the city website for egrets as well as coyotes. There's also information about deterrence. There's information on what to do if there's coyotes to contact us. We will come out as far as the coyotes in those areas, we will look at them, we will, we will see what they're doing, and we'll do an investigation basically whether or not they're doing something that would be a matter to pull them out, okay? Uh, typically, you might see me out there actually looking at the coyotes or one of the supervisors just to make sure. Uh, I know we had an issue a while back, somebody saw, thought the coyote was dinning in somebody's backyard. We went out there, we checked it. They may have passed through, but they weren't dinning. Uh, they actually are dinning somewhere else that um, we're keeping an eye on. Uh, and they do have some cubs, uh, which is one of the reasons why we're not gonna move them. We're gonna leave them where they at, and we're, we're gonna keep an eye on them. Uh, and of course, all the egret stuff, if y'all have any questions, 
This plug reminds me of my old Sega Genesis, and yes, I'm old enough to remember a Sega where you had to like bend the cord underneath the machine to get it to work. Some of y'all laughing because I think y'all had the same kind of Sega. So anyways, at this point, we um, open the floor for discussion. I'll stand off to the side unless it's council related. I'll be more than happy to answer any you know, policy related questions. This gentleman had a question, and then we'll come over to you, okay? Hey, Rachel. I'm not So, off the top of my head, say what? So he was asking how many other neighborhoods around the area, you want to know about the city as well? The whole city? Just, just, just around the just around how many others have Cowboys already? So how many other neighborhoods around Candle Ridge that have coyotes in them? So Candle Ridge is a big park, okay? They have several areas in Candle Ridge where we have little pockets. Uh, the one that y'all may have seen as far as the two and the cubs are close to probably French Lake. I have a couple more down south by the, this old, uh, the elderly living area. I have some further down south by uh, Chisholm Trail. I have three by the lake, by, uh, by the zoo. I have two by the botanical gardens in Trinity Park. Uh, I have a couple on the east side. Yeah, that's, that's pretty spread out. I, just, they, I guess my, my question is, with all the construction going around on the south and the east of the uh, we have not seen Nobody reported that they were being fed, uh, but we will look into that. Please, we had parks and rec. We're going to come and try to trim that area up down there. Mm. Uh, and so we just, I don't know who's feeding them or why they're feeding them, but that's all that's going to bring more roads and some other things down there. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised that's why they're denning that area. They, they actually been denning in that area for about three years now. Okay. Be, because I, I knew about them over there. We've actually pulled, had to pull one of them three years ago out, and there was a female that was left over. The one that we pulled out had, unfortunately, had distemper. So we had to pull him out, and he was sick. So the other, of course, the female there, she's gonna find a suitor. That suitor came in, but they've been there for about three years. Uh, we will definitely look into that. Yeah. Mine is not necessarily about coyote, but it's still about a wild animal. Huh. Single horse from the road in the parks. All those seagulls or white birds or whatever they are. Egrets. Those are egrets. Egrets. They're egrets? Yeah. That's Are you, t are you, are you talking about the birds that come in by Welch Lake? No, they, they like to stay in that parking lot in our 7-Eleven. Those are ring-billed gulls. Those are what? Ring-billed gulls. They're only here in the winter. They're gulls, right? So let me, I will get with uh, Parks and Rec, and I will see if we can get some signs out there. Okay. Because that, that, that's one of the biggest problems that we have sometimes is 
is people feeding the, feeding the wildlife, and it does cause a problem. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you can t definitely, the seagulls and the egrets, you can tell the big difference with them. Egrets got the long beaks. Yes, ma'am. I lived on Cartagena and went to the south for it'll be 49 years. There was no candle bridge at the time. That was in the plans, but it became it with the Air Force. And we never saw coyotes then. People, they had hunting back in what is now Canada Ridge and dove hunting and deer shots and things like that. We never had coyotes until a few years ago when they put in the Chisholm Trail. They were forced out of their habitat, habitat yes. And, and, that's, and we have them. I see them in the morning when I walk my dog around Canada Ridge. And they are very unassuming. You know, they, they're on their side, I'm on mine. And uh, lately I've seen up to four. And I, I love to see them because I know they keep the rope population down and, uh, and stray cats and people who have other animals should keep them in. You know, they, they shouldn't be running wild anyway. And I have a big dog. And they never have bothered us. And I always say hi wildly in the morning. And while I like to hear the I don't know if I But but I, I'm glad to see them and I want them to stay to do what they're doing. And that's my Well, like I said earlier, we're not we're going to keep keep an eye on them, okay? We're gonna keep an eye on them. We're not removing them. As Rachel said, moving them away, there's only one way because you can't relocate them, okay? And I'm not going to remove them. We're going to leave them where they're at. We're going to keep an eye on them. We're going to make sure that they're not doing something. If y'all see, see them doing something that they y'all feel they shouldn't be doing, let us know. You can go on my, my Fort Word app. You can call our call center at 817-392-1234. Let us know, we'll go out there, we'll check them, and hopefully we can live together with them with no problems. Well, not only are we seeing uh, coyotes maybe a little bit more because of their... Years ago, we were told they're territorial, so when you clear out to make a subdivision, they always, Mother Nature always adapts, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they. Exactly. I, we don't. We will not remove any wildlife unless it's going to be a nuisance to the citizens or it's going to be a sick animal. Because I mean, a lot of wildlife does spread disease, so we want to keep those two in check because there's a combination between the domestic animals and. Wildlife, so we just we definitely want to want to keep an eye on that. So the message to residents is learn to live with the wildlife that's already here, and we can be a lot of ourselves by not leaving them there. So protecting them, there are a large number of people in our district that clean the trails cats. I'm sure that's part of the reason why we're seeing increased coyotes in the region. And we have been in contact with a lot of the feral colony people. We educate them about leaving food out. Uh, we tell them to feed the animals at certain times, uh, and once they're done eating, to pick up the stuff. Uh, we're still doing that. We're going to continue to educate, and we're going to continue to talk with them and work with them to make sure everything. We also work with them for TNR, because uh, the city does support TNR for cats. 
So we'll continue to do all those things with the feral colonies as well as every citizen. And we educate everybody in reference to their domestic dogs. Uh, we also pick up a lot of stray dogs so we can keep those you know, secure for citizens as well. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I've seen people post before that they just shoot the coyote and that animal. So if it's a nuisance animal, uh, we could go out there. If it's doing something wrong that we need to eradicate, take them out, uh, yes, we could go out there and shoot them. Uh, we do have tranquilizer guns. Uh, I don't suggest any citizens shooting any weapon in the, in the neighborhoods or in the city because PD will come out and could possibly. Now, if, if a coyote is attacking somebody and they are defending themselves from the coyote, I mean, that could happen. But I don't suggest anybody going around with their gun shooting any wildlife. Contact us. Let us go out there. A lot of these officers have been with the city for 10 plus years and they've been working with me on a lot of this. All of them are tranquilizer qualified and they can do what we gotta do. So let's be clear, there was some uh, discussion on uh, social media about somebody claiming that animal control was out there with an air rifle. That was not the case. Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Tuesday at 2 p.m. with the coyote. I'm the person that saw it. I saw an animal control truck driving down Willow Way, turned on the welt, cut off two coyotes, jumped out of the car, had an air rifle in his hand. I don't know what they were doing. Can you clarify? Okay, so there was a call that we had that somebody was concerned about the coyotes and wanted to point out where they were. That officer did go out there. He was in with a dart gun. He did not. His... He had called me and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is, I'm like, okay, just keep an eye on them, see what they're doing. But we wasn't removing them and we wasn't darting them. Now, we do get out sometimes with the dart gun and we might look through a scope to see, make sure that we're seeing the, the coyotes. Does not, make, does not mean he was gonna shoot them, okay? Sometimes we can see better with the binocular on the gun, but, uh, Yes, he, he did contact me. We told him, I told him that we were not taking the coyotes out. I knew about them. I told him exactly where they were, exactly where he knew that they were. And the discussion was had right there that they were not gonna be removed. Okay, anything else? So she wanted to know where the den was and whether or not they were in the back of Candle Ridge Park Apartments. The den is not in the back of Candle Ridge Park Apartments, okay? It's about a quarter mile from my house. <laughs> Some people probably already know where the den is. Uh, I would ask that nobody go by the den because there are cubs. Uh, and if you do go by the den, then the coyotes will be, they could be defensive for their cubs. Okay, it is springtime. Springtime is when all the flowers bloom. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna put it like that. <laughs> the flowers bloom, so also the cubs come out, okay? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chris um, and Rachel. Um, we're so proud of the partnership that we have with um, not only our uh, city departments with code compliance, especially on this issue, but um, also for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department taking time out um, to come be with us. Um, we, yeah, we could clap for that. <laughs> um, well, thank you all for attending. We are actually done 20 minutes early, so I think we've solved all the problems for today. <laughs> Um, but that does not mean y'all can't keep reporting the problems. And so um, I am really, really excited about the My Fort Worth app. 
Um, not only can you report um, egrets using the um, egret button on my fourth app, but you can also report any number of issues that you're seeing in the city. Um, the importance of using the my fourth app is it creates a ticket and the um, staff respond to that ticket and they work with you until that ticket's completed and you, keep, you have a record on your app of all the tickets that have been completed that you've submitted. Um, so please, please, please um, submit it. Use the My Fourth app if you have a smartphone. If not, um, you can always um, call the call center. Um, that's 817-392-1234. Um, and you can also contact our council office um, and we're happy to connect you and help you navigate the city to find the right person and the right department to answer your questions. Um, for those of you who are watching online, you can also do all of those same things. Um, and for all of us, um, please take these pro tips um, and spread the word with your neighbors. Um, don't feed the coyotes, right? Now we have deterrence tools that also work for egrets. Um, and just know that egrets are federally protected. And so if you're unsure um, about any of um, the uh, species of wildlife in your neighborhood and what to do with them, always, always reach out to the city. Um, we work for you, and so put us to work um, by reporting what you see. Um, for those of you watching online, um, um, please share this recording as well. Um, and again, if you have any questions, reach out to our office or any of those number of uh, ways to engage. Thank you all, um, and have a blessed night. Take care.